This is Rob at Higher Powered Performance. Um, I just left some feedback on Rad H2O with his O2 extenders and I've been wanting to do this experiment for a while to see if we truly need EFEs and O2 triggers. Um, as you know, um, O2 sensors read the amount of oxygen content left in the exhaust. Too much oxygen means you don't have enough fuel, which will be a lower voltage. Um, not enough oxygen, which too much fuel will result in a higher voltage. Now I have this four wire heated O2 sensor wired up and see that it's, it's hot. See the sizzle? And it's kind of hard. It's four in the morning and it's dark here. But to put your all minds at rest, you know, O2 needs to be 800 degrees. We're going to go ahead and warm this thing up with the torch. Get it cherry hot. See it turn red there. Turn off the light. See the red glow? Okay, now ambient air, if you can see this voltage. We're what 20% oxygen, I think, at sea level. You have to look up the numbers. But we're at 0 0.019 volts. Oh, we're running lean. We <coughs> we have uh, uh, too much oxygen in the exhaust, right? Now I've got this engine tuned to run fat on purpose. I'm going to shove. O2 in my exhaust pipe here. And you notice I'm running really, really fat. 0.95 volts. I've adjusted the carburetor so that it runs overly rich at idle. Now what I'm going to do is put my trusty 2 liter per minute VSB VP cell. See the bubble in? And I'm going to introduce pure oxygen into this exhaust. Now this is not recommended. This could blow me up. But I'm going to put it upstream. This thing's going to ingest all that oxygen. Oh, 0.95 volts still. What this is telling me, folks, is uh, this little amount of oxygen we're putting in from the cells uh, is not changing our O2 readings. Now the best way obviously is to run um, an O2 or you know look at your uh, readings on a scanner and then watch your your oxygen content and your uh, specific, more specifically your short, to, short term fuel trims. Um, any more questions on this you can personal message me and I'll be glad to answer any questions. Um, it's just pretty funny that I can introduce oxygen right in that at that sensor and I'm not running any leaner with this extra oxygen. Um, the amount of oxygen, you know, we're obviously running way upstream so we're not going to have any ambient air temperature or air mixing in with the equation. Sorry, it's really late for me. Um, so the, the amount of oxygen versus the volume of the gas, you're going to need a lot of oxygen to be running lean, which just means you're not oxidizing that fuel and it hasn't used that available 20% atmosphere and, and there wasn't enough fuel to mix with that 20% oxygen going into the engine to effectively oxidize the fuel. So the computer will you know it'll compensate it'll add more fuel so we get less oxygen or it'll take fuel away to get uh, more oxygen it's just gonna bounce back and forth so this little amount is you know two liters a minute cells that 90 percent of you are running less and you're adding it into the equation up at the engine uh, this is showing me folks that uh, EFEs aren't needed now I'm going to get onto an OBD2 car and throw two liters in the intake and double check myself. This is food for thought. I think we have too much follow the leader going on with 
you know, reading stuff on the internet and, um, you know, we're introducing HHO and it's a self-oxidizing fuel and we're getting better mileage results because it's <coughs> basically a catalyst for that fuel and it, you know, it, it'll, it'll burn more completely. So all this, you know, and this is my opinion, don't take what I say for gospel either, go out and just do it yourself. Um, you know, but in my opinion on this EFI thing is it's all a bunch of crap, um, and it's not needed. Um, I could be way off track, but uh, these little numbers that I've just showed you, uh, they don't lie. You know, um, here again, let's shove the hose in. Sorry, I need an assistant very badly here. And uh, we're still running point, point 0.9, point 0.87. Well, it's really hard for you to see, but these numbers aren't lying to me. Um, <laughs> this is going to blow a lot of people away, and I hope that uh, especially people who manufacture EFIs don't get super pissed off and get their panties up in a bunch because. Uh, we may be on the track of not needing these things. Um, comments, questions, whatever. More than happy to read them and see them. Um, I'm trying to uh, come at this. I'm a very bullheaded individual. Um, I don't take what anybody's putting out on the internet for granted. I have to see it for myself. Um, and this is showing me that uh, I may not waste the money building an EFI. Uh, this is just kind of, this is horse crap in my opinion. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do it to put everybody's mind to rest, but I'm going to be showing you guys real time live data from a computer and you can see oxygen, you can see what the short term fuel trims are doing, uh, long term fuel trim, um, you know, and to get better mileage, our long term fuel trim needs to go negative, it needs to shorten your short term also um, but if we take too much fuel out of these engines uh, we're gonna have more and more problems and if you truly have a wideband system your newer Hondas, Saabs, Saturn whatever you do do not put O2 extenders in it a wideband that system will heavily heavily rely on O2 feedback for fuel map and if you start confusing it and pissing it off you will damage engines 100 um, percent and I hope you do take that and not just try that for yourself because I'd hate to see a lot of people hurting engines um, so Rob at higher power performance signing out at uh, 5 in the morning here have a great night <laughs>